Whoa, what is up? Oh, that's what I'm forgetting. I'm forgetting my coffee. How are you guys doing? So today we have a Mustang. Um, oh, awesome. I picked it up. Sweet. So I think that's going to work. Uh, we are doing 35% uh, on the sides and the back. So we're going to get started on that very shortly. I just got to make sure everything seems like it's working. Yes, all right, good deal. It's like juggling on a unicycle. Good, okay, we are good. Excited for the live? Thank you, glad to hear it. Um, what else, there was one more thing, one more thing. Oh yeah, 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 I gotta get the film. All right, let me go get the film real quick. I just put up some lights today. I still have to do some inventory, but lights are way more fun, so that's what got done today. So that's what, like, all along here and up. So hopefully we'll have some nice extra even lighting, something I've been wanting to do for a little bit, and now it's done. So it looks good. It looks nice and bright over there. So just didn't like the contrast of, like, the bright white walls and everything against that side, but hopefully, uh, hopefully this GoPro takes it pretty well. We'll find out if we need to make some adjustments here. Then I had to adjust my head strap and I screwed it all up, but I think it's okay now. I'm going to tame the tang. What? what are, oh, the Mustang. Yes. Yes, that's what we're doing. Mm, I think that's, that's probably good. Oh yeah, and then last but not least, we need a way so we can do GoPro. GoPro. It's broken! Hold, please. Is it a GT or V6? It sure sounds muscly. Uh, not positive offhand though, but it seems pretty good. I think it's a GT. It's got the extra lights in the grill, too. They usually mean something better, right? Okay. Now we should work. GoPro. Hey! All right. We're getting a handle on this. So let's see. What's this look like? Too bright? Good lighting? How are we looking on this? Is it a manual? Yes. It is a GT. And it's... It's got those those lights right here, so looking looking real good. I think we're just it's a bit of a lower car too, so there's gonna be probably a little adjustment I have to do. But look at that, it's bright bright all the way around. Oh six. GT3 valve. Yes, that's a GT. That's literally my car. No, it's not. It's, it's the client's car. It's not your car. <laughs> Same car. Good enough. I also think I lost a knife here. Um, that's fine. I just don't know where it went. Maybe it fell out in another car. Um... <laughs> People on window tint stuff are saying it's easier to bottom load. I don't want to pull panels. Well, then don't. Don't do it. Yeah, I think I caught that post a little bit. It was uh, like, which is better? And I've done my own little surveys too. And what I can tell you is a good number of them lean towards 25% of the community bottom loading and 75% of the community doing other stuff. But people that do bottom load are very passionate about it. <laughs> I did see a few people that said, I do both. And I appreciate you. 
Thank you. I think that's the way to go. There's certain circumstances where bottom loading can be very beneficial, and then there's other ones where uh, you just you don't you don't need to. Oh, here's my clear crush. All right. Now what do we need to do? We need to tape off some stuff really quick. So we have frameless doors on this one. Um, so we don't have sides that we have to tape, but if we want this to stick right, maybe this will help with the bottom. It might just stick right, but hell, let's just do this. I'm using too much electricity. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> It's for a good cause. We also have to trip the latch on these ones just so these doors think that they're closed when they're not. Can we, can we just please right there? Thanks. There. And then with, uh, with fog machines too, you know, can't have enough electricity here. Uh, so let's go ahead and prep the back. I did manage to find extra, let's put these over here so I can grab one. Extra Lipman squeegees. Look, there's tag fresh right now. <laughs> these are so good for back windows. I took a two second search and I found them on Amazon with prime shipping. So, hey. I'm learning more for you and you're awesome for answering all the questions. Oh, you're welcome. That's what we're here for. To put out awesome tint jobs and talk about them. Oh, the new blade, it slides very well. I like it. Glass Aid, man, I've been trying. I don't have any current news on a timeline, just that I'm hoping more it'll it'll more will happen here soon, but keeps getting pressed off longer and longer. So it's coming back for sure. It's always been coming back. It's just really frustrated that it's taken this long. Neat. So that's clean. And then we're gonna use it. What have you learned recently that you're applying to your tints? Um, tape is maybe slightly more important than I gave it credit for. All those little things, especially when you're new, um, are gonna help a lot. So taping rubber seals, felt seals, like the big thing was taping felt seals, um, but we're just taping all the seals and it just, just much easier uh, to turn out good, good windows when you have everything taped. So for the longest time I said you didn't need to, and I didn't, and that's true. But I'm noticing it's easier to put out cleaner jobs with it, so hey. Um, as far as the tape goes, just get a good sheathing tape. Low, the Lowe's sheathing tape is fine. Tuck tape, you can find on Amazon, that's good too. Um, Tyvek people are recommending, just like pretty much anything. I'm honestly looking into getting my own, because that would be pretty sweet, because you know, I like Lowe's, but some, there's something about putting Lowe's all over a door panel that doesn't really, eh. <laughs> 
not super stoked about it. Oh, I gotta empty my pockets. I was putting these lights up earlier. What's your thoughts on Flex versus Geo? I'm thinking about starting Tint on the side. I don't know who to order from. Well, you're gonna see me use Geo, so hey. <laughs> I like Geo better. <laughs> I don't talk about Flex much. I'm not, not a big fan of that company, so hey. Uh, what is, oh no, I read that. Is there gonna be enough glass aid so it doesn't run out again? I sure hope so. <laughs> I mean, I've been pretty adamant about how much I need, so. It wasn't supposed to run out before, and then it did, but hey, here we are. Who do you buy the tape for the rear window? It's, sorry, it's out of stock. Best you can use right now is uh, get yourself um, like a pinstriping and just double or triple up on it. That'll help. I mean, if you just want a white line, pinstriping's been a thing forever, so. All right, so that part is prepped. We're also going to prep these quarters. They have um, some crud on there. We're gonna make sure that's all clean. These had louvers on them. Uh, they're just Velcroed on, which is pretty awesome. So they popped off. We found that out in the parking lot. But there would be a way to actually cut these out on the inside. It just would be a little bit more challenging. Looks like there's a lot of grease and stuff in here though. <laughs> How long before you're forced to find an alternative? I don't, I don't know. Hopefully I'm not. Um, Maybe looking to order a Geo this week then. Any advice on where to get a good keg and tools from? I have a decent amount of cash stashed away. Sure, absolutely. Um, so there's a couple tool companies uh, that uh, we actually work with. So Sun Distributing, uh, they actually are most famous for their tint kegs. Um, so that's the one I have sitting over in that corner. Um, and they have every tool that you could hope for. Um, also, Tint Depot, they have a nice uh, recommendation page. Let's see if I can link it for you. Tint Depot. Hey, there we go. Tint Depot's got a really nice recommendation page of everything that I use. There might be a couple editions that aren't on there. But Sun Distributing and Tint Depot, those are both good places to get tools from. I should probably have an updated tool video, but it hasn't changed much. So if you go on the channel, uh, look up uh, Pro Window Tint Tools, and you should be able to find it. I think it was like 2019, but it's still very relevant for today. And then we always talk about some of the stuff that we use. Whatever you have questions about, just let me know. How much for this one? Uh, this one's going to be 240. They're going with the color stable dyed. So we have to, oh yeah, yeah, we have to pop the latches on this one. And we have to remember so we don't close even, I, we shouldn't. <laughs> we just got to remember. So. Pop the latch on these, you'll notice every time you open and close them, uh, these are those frameless windows that shift down about a half inch. So just, you pop that latch in like it's closed and then it thinks it's closed. You 
trick the door. All right. Um, 35. That's this guy right here. We have a little left here too. Okay. Perfect. Can you demo how to unlatch? Um, so yeah, it's really easy. You just pull on the door handle again. So sometimes they stick. Uh, so pull the latch and then just either take a screwdriver. So that one went right down, but still you can take the screwdriver and then just kind of pull out on that latch. And then what I like to do too is lock the car. So if I ever accidentally pull on those handles, it's not going to untrip the windows at all. You're basically pretending that the door is opening and closing. That's all you're doing. Is that wall on the side new? It is. <laughs> there, uh, it's big gondola shelving, like commercial grade gondola shelving. Um, I'm going to do a display wall of some type. I just got to mess around with it and see what looks good. It's a lot of space. Might want it to go a little farther. It was either, was still planning on doing cabinets, but I kind of, it's hard to plan out in my head. Once I get it set up, then I start messing around with it and figure out what I think looks good. So we're gonna bring this piece over to the other side. We're gonna cut these out individually. Normally we'll double cut frameless. I like to individually cut them just so they're a little bit more exact. You can still cut them individually, but oh, we got some time. Stores like to pick one little spot and stick. All windows? Uh, unfortunately, not the windshield. So it's going to be a pretty straightforward sides and back. Not the craziest of jobs to stream, <laughs> but it's still gonna be worth it. Slide that guy over a little bit. We're gonna go down. About halfway. Nothing crazy on this one. The inside seal is already propped up a little bit above the outside one, so I don't want to push it. We don't have to go crazy far down. Then we might be able to make this in one pass, but. You know, I hopped in here and I greatly appreciated the manual. I don't get enough of them. I didn't have a muscle car for a manual, but my first car, or first car that I bought, well, that's not true. 
I bought the other one. My f uh, so I had a Pontiac G5, and that was a manual. I did end up buying the Buick. My first car was a 93 Buick. Buick Century, ooh, so stylish. <laughs> and then somebody ripped a hole in it, and then I bought a uh, Pontiac G5 because it came in a manual and it looks slightly better than the Cobalt did because I couldn't afford an SS Cobalt. Plus everybody had the Cobalt. But it was good on gas. Were the titles not updated for Facebook? My bad. I guess I forgot to, I thought I updated them. I guess I didn't. If it's still putting the, uh, the old title on it, it just wasn't updated from the last stream. No, it's because this is dark Chevy right here. <laughs> But who watches on Facebook? You. <laughs> Brand of knife that you're using? Uh, it's a NT cutter. NT cutter. Uh, this is going to be the most popular tint knife. This is the uh, Red Dot NT Cutter Pro A1. I think is what it, what the name of it actually is, but Red Dot. I got some Ulfas I have to play around with. I didn't realize they made so many slight end variations on Ulfas. What's up, bud? <laughs> Not much, pal. How you doing? I typically use the red dot. Main reason is it's got more clicks, but I think there's an Ulfa with more clicks on it. I just don't know which one it is. So. All those little in-between clicks, the NT, uh, NT cutter, this one has those extra clicks. A lot of the Ulfa ones, though, they have like half the amount of clicks. So it's just nice when you're making a lot of edge cuts and stuff. You have that tip, and then you also have all the in-betweens. So you use more of that blade. Are you going to shave this window? No. We're gonna mess around with that mini sander, but I didn't want to mess around it on this car, so we're gonna do a very small edge on this one, which is what we normally do. No, I haven't tried the sander yet. I will, eventually. There's no time when you're setting up cool lights. <laughs> Glad I found your channel. Welcome. Yeah, this is, if you're looking to, to tint, this 
This isn't a bad place to do that. <laughs> Why not file the edge? Uh, it hasn't gone well for me yet, so we'll put some time into it. We'll figure it out. Trimming it with a knife has been about as good as it's been, but they'll usually fall apart somewhere in there. So I want a quicker, more consistent way of doing it. I just hasn't been my strong suit. I haven't had like from the time that I've practiced, like most, most of the time I was running around to other shops and stuff. Now that we're here, we're gonna be focusing on some of those better things. Just trying to get this here. There we go. Glass aid? Eventually, it'll be back. I don't know when exactly, but hopefully not much longer. Sorry, I wish I had better news on it. Cool. That should do it. What does shaving the glass do? So it's a, it's a technique that some people do. Um, more so on frameless doors. So we always have like a small gap at the top when you're hand cutting. Um, so People will either take a blade or a file or something. They'll overlap the tint right over the very edge, and then they'll go over it with a file and smooth it out so it's seamless. It's one of those like real subtle particular things that you're you're not even going to notice unless you're kind of looking for it, but it is, it is really, really cool. So I have asked how much of a gap there is. I have never at, been asked to file something. So that's why it's never been a priority. You probably aren't going for affiliate on Twitch. <laughs> No. No, affiliate on Twitch is, uh, it's kind of been funny. I've been streaming consistently, um, well, relatively consistently. Whenever I go live on YouTube, I also go live on Twitch as well. And Twitch has not grown at all. Very, like, very few followers, no consistent base. Twitch is just kind of like a, uh, I, don't I don't tell people I'm streaming on Twitch. I just kind of left it up there as, an, as another place for people that like it. Uh, but it hasn't done anything. Hey! <laughs> awesome! That was super nice. I'm waiting for it to pop up. It seems to be lagging behind. Did it pop up and I just didn't hear it? Is it doing that on me again? Because that is upsetting if that's the case. Jose! Jose with the five, thank you. Nice work, you've nice videos. Watched them yesterday for Mustang and I did my very well. <laughs> Glad to hear it, man. How you doing? 
I was waiting for that. I like that. I, see, that's cool. You guys are like planning when I walk by, to, by there and then you just like shoot it at me. That's really funny. That's cool. Have fun with it. That's what they're there for. Um, what do we need to do? We're going to clay bar, scrub. <sighs> How much do you charge for a chameleon for front windshields? Uh, you have to buy it yourself. But I'll charge you 150 to install it. I've never seen anything like that for donations. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I haven't either. <laughs> it's one of those things. So, like, we have a balloon, too, that I haven't set up in a minute. But these will go off every time, so... They're fun. Took a took a. I had to learn some stuff to get those things set up because this is not just a quick thing. You got to find a system that ties into the super chats and everything. So that was fun. Yeah. So a little bit about Twitch and affiliate. Yeah, they want your content there. They want you to be exclusive to Twitch. I could probably sign an affiliate agreement and still multi-stream and nobody would notice for quite a while. But, I mean, the, the way that people find how to tint is on YouTube. YouTube and then the Facebook groups next. So, I'm never really gonna treat Twitch very seriously because I don't like the, the exclusive agreements either. I think that's pretty crazy. They're kind of falling behind. They're like the live streaming platform. That's what they're known for, but. Any, any time you have to like really buckle down and post everywhere else to put traffic towards like a place like Twitch. Ugh. Ugh. It's just like, why? I don't even know. Why would I even put it on my own website or something if I'm going to put all that effort into advertising myself on a platform? I have five viewers. Five viewers on Twitch? That's got to be like a record now. Dang, we might actually qualify for Twitch. All right, forget everything I said. Let's go. <laughs> What'd I say? Screw you two. <laughs> We're holding it down. All right, I appreciate it. That's why we still stream there, though. I mean, that's the most I've heard from Twitch, so I'm a little cynical at it because uh, it hasn't done. I've been streaming every day on every every time I stream, I, I stream on Twitch, and that stream, boy, it just sits there. It doesn't do much. <laughs> But yeah, I've always been on on YouTube, so that's where all the videos and stuff get posted. Ooh, I like that. That looks sharp. But I get a lot of inspiration from Twitch streamers, so it's really cool. Sushi Dragon is awesome. Um, will you see a difference between stock tint and ceramic if you just do the two fronts? Yes. Maybe. So factory tint versus aftermarket tint. Um, the thing is, 
they're all gonna look different. So if I show you factory tint from one vehicle to another vehicle, they're gonna be different. So as a window tinter, we have our brand, our film, whatever we're carrying. Whenever they say like, oh yeah, mine matches factory so well, it's like, which factory? Because <laughs> they're all a little different. So it's a subtle thing you're gonna notice on the inside. Uh, there will be a little color difference. Sometimes there can be a little bit of a shade difference, but it'll, it'll come really, really close. Unless somebody's got some ugly film and then it will just look way different. But for the most part, on the outside, you'll look totally fine. On the inside, that's where you're gonna notice the difference. So if we were feeling really ambitious today, we would pick up that mini belt sander down there and we'd go, go over the whole thing. I don't want to risk damaging this very lovely Mustang here. So we're, uh, we're not gonna do that. But that being said, I mean, come on now. Look at how nice that edge turned out. Oh, it's so pretty, it's so close. So like the difference is like that much. Oh, sorry, my twitchy fingers. It's just little, little teeny tiny bit. Make the sound of belt sander. <laughs> Go back in the video, and you can hear it. Isn't that what it does? It goes <laughs> The things I don't even think about. There we go. Looking nice. Look at this interior. It is so red. Got red exterior, red interior. It's nice to actually get some color in a car for once. Uh, is the Economy One Ply from Tint Depot for 93 good film to practice with? It's gonna be thin. You'll learn. So the difference really between a one, one ply or one and a half mil film and a two ply, or no, sorry, one mil one ply, one and a half mil, two ply, typically is how that goes. That's not for sure, but that's usually how it goes. Um, still good to practice with, yes, but there's gonna be a few things. It's gonna shrink quicker, and it's gonna feel a little bit more tissue papery. So I actually started with Lumar AT. Some people don't, don't remember Lumar AT. Lumar AT was their one mil line, and then they discontinued their one mil line in favor of a one and a half mil line ATC. So they had both at the time, and for whatever reason, we were just ordering AT. So it was a bit of a transition to go from one to the next, but I started with that one mil thin film. So for I liked it more, I think, for, for door windows, because it... It was, seemed a little bit thinner to like tuck into sides and stuff, but it didn't hold up very strong. But you can could, you could maneuver it a lot easier because the thicker films, you're going to crinkle them up a little bit trying to get them tucked in. So some of the little differences there. So long answer short, yes. <laughs> yes, you can definitely practice with it. And then if you want to leave it on a car, I, I don't know until when it, starts changing colors on you, but it's cheap, so wouldn't expect it to last for all that long. Is that plastic similar with food wrap? I don't know. Um, it's carpet shield, so it's extra sticky. You don't really, it's, it's got a sticky layer, so it's not like saran wrap. It's a little bit better. What brand of squeegee do you use, the orange and the blue one? Uh, this one is the Fusion Hybrid, so I actually have a bunch of them. This whole drawer is full of uh, fusion squeegees. They're really like one of the only makers of squeegees. Um, and then you have the two by Blue Max. So that's, that's what we have all in this drawer. There's like a couple other, other ones, but like they kind of cornered 
most of the market there. It was either that or Lexan. Just be careful on getting like the cheap Lexan, like cheap, cheap Lexan, because shrinking that is, uh, is more difficult. I have tried that stuff. That stuff was uh, kind of a meme. It just took like, took a lot of heat to shrink the outside. So it's like the first quarter went pretty well. And then after that, it was uh, not so smooth. So that's why like, if you're gonna practice, I do suggest getting like a color stable, or no, sorry, not a color stable, just like a, a cheaper one and a half mil dyed film. You'll learn a lot and you'll save some money. Did we? Yes, we did. We got that over here. We caught another live. Welcome. We are stoked to have you. Stoked. Alrighty, let's do it. Goal. <laughs> Not really. Expel Prime Plus. Was that Prime Plus? That is, that is a nice tint job that you're getting there. Hope it goes well. Come on. Come on. Come on. There we go. Oh, I like this. I like this very much. This is probably one of the better Mustang edges I've done. Boy, that's close. Oh, I like that. Sure, it didn't shift on me. We're what up to that edge? Nice. DG cut sounds familiar. Sounds like a plotter software thingy. Digi cut. Do they have? Tint patterns, though? I don't remember. Sorry, one second. We're concentrating here. Just want to make sure this all doesn't shift on me. Wow. This is It 
Ex Express slash Global just released plotter software and named it DigiCut. Interesting. Yeah, I haven't I haven't heard or used it. You know, I hope it's original. I do know there are a few companies that are putting their own brand on existing software. But I haven't I haven't messed with it, so I don't know much about it. This looks good. Wow. I am very happy with this. I didn't even have to shave it off. Ooh, that's close. <sighs> All right, what's going on, chat? Work at a dealership. They came in, took they came in, took over from Permaplate, gave us film and supplies and everything. Oh yeah. Expel bought Permaplate. Where's my Where's my mom? What's up? Um, we're going to dealership. Yeah. Yeah, Expel bought out Permaplate. So you're going to see everything kind of switch over. Expel's going after the preload market right now, which, you know, they have territories. This was something that I was asking their, uh, one of their reps. They have territories, but those territories don't apply to dealers. It's not like one dealer to another. That's like one dealer to uh, closer tint shop. So mm, I get what they're saying, but it's not a great look either. Mm. Whoa! Dang. Oh, Gator's watching. <laughs> Gator with, oh, I know what I did. Oh, I'm so sorry. I did this. I turned him off. That's what happened. I didn't mean to do that. I was uh, trying to record a short video, and then I disabled the, the link for a second. Anyways, alligator with the five, what's up from Florida? <laughs> hey, man, how you doing? All right, we got to keep going on this one. We got a back window and some quarters to do. All right, let's unroll this guy. And then we need a little bit for these quarters because we're not going to be able to... We actually, can we? Wow, that was fun. We're gonna try. What do you think? You think this is gonna work? It's gonna be close. It's gonna be close. Oh, look at that. Saves the day. Look at that. They designed it just to fit those quarters. 36, 36 inch roll on almost every car. Quarter windows. 
and excess back window film usually work out. burn on end when shrink. I mean, you can burn any film. <laughs> it generally lays okay. I haven't had, I haven't had any weird issues with it. There we go. That's all good. We're going to shrink these just a little bit. Pull that. And we're going to get this back window. We're going to kind of install everything together. Pretty flat window though. So not a lot of shrinking. So we did this basically on point edge. That's how I used to shrink windows. But I typically don't shrink them that way anymore. But with this film, I betcha I could on most cars. So some films are funny when you get down towards the edge. Um, some of them will curl a little extra. Some of them won't seam down like super evenly. Um, when I went from Lumar, ATC primarily, we had some other ones too, but I was mostly using ATC. This is how I would do a back window. I would basically cut the entire film exact and then I would shrink it and it would save me a step. I wouldn't have to go and cut it out afterwards. So like you do like your rough trim and then you shrink it and then you cut it exact. That's how I would recommend everybody kind of do it, uh, especially in the beginning. But like more like this where we're completely overlapped on the edges, it gives you a little area to screw up. So if I kind of mess up like into this edge a little bit, I'll have extra material down here and I can shift the whole window back up and keep going. Gives you a chance to save the film without scrapping it all. So hopefully we didn't just, we, we started to curl it a little bit too much right there. So it's looking a little funky right there. Let's see if we can even it out or if we just went a little heat gun happy. But I did it to get some quarter windows, so. No, nope, looks like we're evening out well enough. We didn't push it too far. That's good. Look at that. There we go. Ta-da!
Sweet. Now we don't have to cut out the bottom because <laughs> we already did it. Wow, exciting. I want to go back. I want to see how this looks with those extra lights. Then we get those little defroster tabs. It's not something that we typically run into anymore, but they used to be all the rage on pretty much every car. How long have you had the Wagner? Uh, I don't know. It probably looks a little older than it actually is. It would it would take many trips to uh, to symbol. <laughs> and there they had concrete floors, so concrete floors, and it was uh, lots of rain on some days so it's just floors are wet that thing it didn't get kicked around but it definitely did some floor scraping just so it looks a little gross what kind of blades are you using again uh we're using nt cutter ulfas are are good though too it's been a little bit since I've tried them, but they're both good. I'd either get Ulfa or NT. You'd be good with both. Making sure that bottom edge is all locked down. My Wagner goes out every six months. I think this one's been going a little longer than that. It depends on how rough you are with it. Um, some of them, like I actually did have one fizzle out on me. Um, it was just sitting like that. And then next thing you know, like I used it a little bit and then it was just sitting there and then it went, <laughs> smoke. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. A little dangerous to leave plugged in. Little fire hazards. But yeah, the uh, the uh, I don't know. I, I haven't had much luck spending more on a heat gun. So spend twenty bucks every so oh, often. <laughs> you know, those don't get old. There's the sounds. Daniel Rayner super chatted $9.99. Hi, my buddy Master Matt. Was in hospital, but your video is good medicine. Hurrah. Aww. Thank you for the 10. I hope, I hope you're doing okay, man. Shit. That's no good. It's not the first time that's happened. Was in the hospital. But your video is good mess medicine. <laughs> well, glad to hear it. Hope you're doing okay. Thank you for the 10. Um, my dad's watching, but he doesn't have the chat on. Can you casually say that the Mustang is a V6, please? And tell him I told you to say it. <laughs> it's a V6. I don't think it's a V6, though. It's a pretty meaty sounding V6, if it is. I know who that is. New to the channel, how long have you been tinting? Welcome. Um, I've been tinting for 13 years. I've been streaming for a couple now, like a year and a half really, off and on. Trying to figure out my, uh, my little groove here. This place has been around since 
October. Oh, I found a Dorito bag for Dorito. Look at that. It matches the car. <laughs> so these are the inner inserts for the louvers right here. So they go right up in here and then they'll black it out. Look at that. I've never seen that before. Let's put them over here. Keep them out of the way. Little tip too is you can flip over a floor mat. Um, I like to do that, especially on coupes. So if you're doing a lot of in and out on the car, which uh, one of these, yes. We're probably doing a little bit of in out, in out, in out. Hopefully not a ton, but flipping over the floor mats is one of those little nice things that you can do. Because footprints. <sighs> we have that one, and where is the other one? I guess we gotta just go pick that one up off the floor. Oh my god. <laughs> this place was way messier today because I was putting up those lights and stuff. We're gonna do inventory soon. I gotta clear all that stuff out, clear all that stuff out. Finally gonna catch up this week, I think, on all of that. We don't have headrests on this one either, so that's nice. Sometimes they got those angled down headrests and whatnot. You can flip them out of the way, but oh yeah, this one ain't too bad. Cool. Let's go grab a couple of tools, which we should have done already. Yeah! So fun. Love climbing in and out of coops. What windshield percent is more popular, 50 or 70? Lately, 70 from what I've been doing, but I'd say 50%. I just happen to do a lot of 70s lately, but 50%, uh, depending on like kind of where I was, was like way more, more consistent. People, people typically tint for looks, but if they're tinting for heat rejection, they're going 70 most of the time. Ba, 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 ba. So let's put those there, and then, oh yeah, 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 a couple back window tools, that's what I need. Do you have a video on how to remove third brake light from BMW? Maybe? We actually removed the brake light on the last BMW that we did, and being that I'm in the back of a car right now, it's really easy to explain. So on a BMW, what you have is you'll usually have a cover that you have to pull off, and then the, the third brake light itself will have tabs on the side. Sometimes they're hidden and they look just like the rest of the cover, and you pop them to the side. But the BMWs always have side tabs. Audis will just pull straight forward. But I'd Google it too. You'll probably be able to find a video on YouTube about it, but I don't know if I have a specific one for the one you're working on. What's a good 70% heat rejection film for windshield? Well, I'm kind of fond of, ew, no, oh, that's not good. 70% uh, uh, Pro Nano Ceramic. Because that's what I use. Okay, so why went you? Okay, good, they're coming off. There's a bunch of little, not a ton. We're gonna have to squeeze this off. We gotta get a razor blade. But we're not gonna be damaging the window. Um, so what I'm seeing are little, what look like carbon specks. But it, they weren't on there super strong. So something, some black thing that seems an awful lot like hard carbon specks, but they're kind of scraping off the window. I gotta make sure all those are removed first. So best way to do that is gonna be with like a razor blade. Um, just be careful. They're all like in between the defroster lines. So no worries there. Just definitely wanna make sure that's taken care of before I go to tenant. Something you gotta look at close to notice 
but when you tint it, uh, you, if you just tint straight over it, you'll definitely notice it. Glad I saw them. Maybe those extra lights helped. <laughs> um, I learned a lot from these videos. Oh, nice. What's the hardest vehicle to tint? Oh, I don't know. There's a lot I'll probably curse at you for. <laughs> so, like this, hope I, hopefully I can get a good close-up. Just... They don't look like they're embedded in the glass, which is really nice. They're just like surfaced. But... Just kind of like combing all the lines to make sure there's one. One right down there. Would also be smart to do this before the whole back window was coated. But hey, we didn't see it until now, so hey. Which, how would you? It's a black deck lid. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah, one here. Oh no, we already scraped that one. Cool. Yeah, looks like we're all good on that. Nice. If you ever come across a vehicle with uh, with weld splatter, um, those usually won't come off. What? I don't know. That was weird. I couldn't tell you exactly what that was, but it definitely reminds me of like a hard little carbon spat from either like like mechanical work, welding, or just glass manufacturing. But it wasn't embedded in the glass, thankfully. So who knows? Maybe it was hard specs from the Doritos. <laughs> Which makes no sense. Swipe, be swipe. And then one more. There we go. Daniel Rayner super shatted nine dollars and ninety nine cents. Tint <sighs> Studio live stream the best. Plus, his Matt is a humble guy. <laughs> if he makes a mistake on live stream, he recognizes it. Hurrah! <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you for the for the ten, Daniel. Appreciate it. You know what keeps you humble? Is if you, if you have a YouTube channel based around tinting and then you still got people calling you and telling you you're too expensive. <laughs> That'll keep you humble. How much is it? 240. Yeah, have a good day. <laughs> or just click. This is that tint limbo. We'll get there one day. Oh, all right. I'm gonna have to like tilt my head down just a little bit here, I think, because GoPro and roof clearance aren't aren't agreeing very much right now. This would be a relatively smart one to reverse roll. But we still just do them like this because we've done a bunch of them like this before we even reverse rolled. So if the camera's all types of funky right now, know that it is very close to that roof. Uh. <laughs> Why is 
<laughs> my phone just started playing music because I bumped my watch. I was so confused. Um, all right, I think we're good. I do not. I do not enjoy stuffing myself in the back of a coop. But it's for a worthy cause. If you're not a very flexible person, this one definitely makes your uh, your legs a little sore. But I'm very thankful for the amount of room that they have around this back window. I'm doing this car right now. That's sweet. Eee. All right, I need to. He said, I would do these quarters right now. I just need to stretch my legs for a sec. Ha! <laughs> fun. Fun, fun. Do customers complain about water droplets? Um, no. Internet complains about water droplets. So we do some things to make sure everything's covered up and we're not damaging anything. But seeing the water sprayed around a car will definitely set some people off. So, most people will at least kind of be exposed to what's going on. So, like, if they were going to freak out about it, it's like, it's a wet application, this is how it's done. So, anybody that's concerned about water being sprayed is probably not coming here then. But um, I did take a couple measures for the bits that I think anybody would be a little more concerned about. So um, covering up door panels, that was like one of the number one comments that I had um, for concerns on my like how to tin a door window video. It was like, ah, it's an ocean now. Or he just completely ruined that car. <laughs> and, whoa. Whoa. What the heck? Dang. Daniel, damn Daniel, that's a damn Daniel. Daniel Rayner super chatted $49.99 by some good coffee, bro. <laughs> Dang, we're going to get a lot of good coffee. Thank you. That's a real big one. I like to buy good coffee. Coffee is a daily thing. If we don't go a day with, with, without coffee... I'm still okay, but I definitely think that there was something missing that day. <laughs> Thank you so much. That was a huge one. Daniel Reina, Big Money's. We will rename him to Big Money. Uh, oh, I forgot my sprayer. I moved it. It's over there. Somebody want to go get that so I don't have to, like, get out again? No? Okay. I guess I'll get out. I'm very happy with the way this back window turned out, though. I didn't see any speckles. You could host a concert in your bay? That's the idea. I mean, come on. <laughs> 
that's an 05 to 2010 ish Mustang body style. It is. Oh, thank you for telling me that too, by the way, because I didn't. I the so the one before this was the very curvy one, and I couldn't remember if there was one in between there. I didn't think there was. So yeah, the, similar to like Corvette. When Mustang went from like the curvy back window with the really big dot matrix to this one, I was very happy. I think the only part I was a little upset was like carrying that long back window in here was a bit annoying. But not bad. All right, so now we're gonna try and get this little quarter window here. Ta da! Line that guy up. Good amount of space to work with on the inside of here too. You know, she's just got a pretty good turbo here. I'm not a huge turbo fan, but I am rather a fan of their, oh, did we just do that? Oh, silly me. Of course, leave it to the easy window to all of a sudden have a gap. There's just a sliver of a gap right there. So we're gonna, just gonna scooch this over just a little bit. And then double check it. Yeah, a lot of grease on this. Just kind of builds up, I guess, over time. Mm. How about that? Yeah, we're gonna redo it. Couple little, little teeny tiny. It's eat now. There's a little like shuffle crease there. We're gonna peel this off. We're gonna stick it back on. It would have been fine, but I was just a little short on that corner when I tacked it down. Just didn't notice it until it was like all stuck. And then once it's all stuck, it's like I gotta try and finagle it. Not worth it. So we need another piece of 35. Do we get a short roll here? No, 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 no. Somewhere else. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Now we gotta remember that we actually flip this sideways then. I didn't think I was going to, but now we are. So if you're gonna shrink it when it's flipped sideways, then you're gonna wanna shrink it on the ends rather than this nice long edge here. Oh shit, I just didn't even, I spaced out for a second. I hope I cut this out the right way too. Then we'll have another problem if that's the case. We're good? Oh, good. We are good. Sweet. There's my heat gun. Is it over there? All right, we'll go do 
this over there. Of all the windows, what a hack. Can't even get a quarter window on a Mustang installed properly. Sweet. Let's get this guy in there. It's already pretty clean. We'll just go over it one more time. Where's my little turbo? And we lost it. No, nope, we found it. It's right here. How long have I been tinting? A uh, couple days. Because I can't even do a quarter window on a Mustang. 13 years? <laughs> Has the heat gun ever melted on the floor? Uh, no. No, actually. The shroud, I think, props up that end. You know, I didn't even think about it. I, the heat doesn't even touch it. But I have melted through into a cable before. <laughs> He's angry. I'm not. I'm fine. I'm fine. No, we're all good. The, uh, it just, it's funny to like, of all the windows, just like, you just have it a little short, and then it's like we're coming into like the end. <laughs> it's a Mustang quarter window. Everything's fine. Oh wait, no, it's not. <laughs> like of course. Better that though than the back window, I guess. Does the squeegee handle fit in that tool? But yeah, it does. I'm not. You mentioned Unger handle. I don't like Unger handles. The metal drives, like, you'll, mm, you'll screw up some film with that thing. Unless you've been using them for a long time and you like them. Oh, God, I can't remember anything now. But I remember ripping through some film ends with an Unger handle before. And just other things. I like the Fusion. Fusion 5 handle way better. And it doesn't rust. I used to use the Unger handle though. Before I knew about the glory of the Fusion handle. Damn! I'm scared to start tinning. Been watching for four months though. You're gonna psych yourself out. I've done that before with, with a lot of things, actually. You'll over plan to death and it'll be way different than you actually think it's gonna be. Just start, Just get some film, get some tools, throw it on some cars and be totally okay with making mistakes because you're gonna make a bunch of them. But that's fine. I just screwed up a quarter window on a Mustang and I'm still here. <laughs> Been tinted for 13 years. Can't even tint the quarter window on a Mustang. Unsubscribe. But yeah, it's uh, it's interesting to to start for sure. It'll, it'll be way different. It's usually way different than you think it's gonna be. It's just, you like think that you got it and then you go to do it and it'll be like, wait, what? But that's all good. Cause we, everybody that's tinning has been there. We all, none of us started out as tint geniuses. We all had to go through pain and struggle and mistakes and frustration and all of that. But if you keep powering through it, You'll get there eventually. Makes sense. Huh.
squeegee goes here. Cowl goes somewhere. Touch that adhesive. On the very end, you got the dot matrix around the whole thing. So if you're going to touch it, you touch it on the very end. I got to leave my signature somewhere. <laughs> Belt sander, you know, uh, as much as I would love to try the belt sander, this is not my car. So we are not going to take that chance on somebody else's yet. We are going to mess around with my own car and live with that forever rather than potentially just like skipping and I, I don't know. I've never even touched it on glass. So. I'm assuming it's going to go really nice. I just definitely am not going to take that risk on somebody else's. Cue the belt sander sound. <laughs> We're not going to go brrr on somebody else's car. That is a no-no. Same thing with like starting them up and revving them and doing burnouts in the shop. You know, I wish this was all just for fun. Oh shit, it's raining now. Sounds like it's coming down pretty hard. I haven't ever heard sprinkling on my door. Oh, I get to see if there's, we got a leak in the shop too. That'll be fun. Ooh, yeah, that's coming down hard. Let me get my, uh, Sorry, let me get my stool here. We had some good thunder the other night. Just got a call, told him 180. He got scared, told him I don't use Walmart tent. <laughs> don't forget to unlatch. Thank you. Look at that. Somebody looking out. Looking out for the well-being of this job. Wouldn't that be fun? Very end. Thanks, guys. Smash. Something breaks. This looks super nice. We get to deliver it in the rain. No, we'll leave it in here. I know some of you guys like rainy days for delivering cars. Here we go. Looking good. Okay. I think we're good. Um, have you ever had problems with little specks? Oh, yeah. Every tinner said problems with little specks. Technique, practice, and thorough cleaning will help all of that. You're the best tinner on YouTube. Well, you heard it. Heard it there. In chat. He said it. Nobody contested it? Cool. Best YouTube tinter. <laughs> Thank you, I appreciate it. Oh yeah, so touching up specs. Um, it just depends. Like, there'll be, like, a couple of specs that you can usually get away with touching up. But it just depends on how bad it is. If you have, like, clumps of specs and stuff, you're going to just have to redo the window. Ooh, best live streamer. That's saying a lot. You know, I don't think I beat XQC, though. There we go. Everything's wiped down, looking good. I'll even wipe off all the carpet too, just to make sure. I used to not. I used to just leave it. Cause I figured it got all soaked up, but it's usually not the case. Ooh. 
This looks nice. Yeah, we're gonna leave this in here. They're gonna come pick this up soon enough. That way they get a good look at it before I deliver it, rather than like jumping in your car in a hurricane. All right, so we gotta unlatch the doors. Any new gadgets for live streaming? We did get fog machines. It's not quite for live, not, not for anything that has to do with live streaming necessarily, but it's part of the fun. All right, so we're gonna put these back down. One thing that I wanna do is just make sure that they're sealed in at the bottom. These are gonna do a fair amount of shifting up and down, so it doesn't hurt to leave these sit for a little bit. But that being said, they're gonna have to get rolled down eventually. There you go. We're gonna get reined in. I'm just gonna wash the car today, actually. All right, let's flip this back over. Put the seat back. And then put this back. Where's the key? We have the key outside of the car, right? So when we do this, we're not risking an auto lock or anything. Key right there, perfect. Paranoia. I have locked keys in the car in the past. Not on stream, thankfully. <laughs> Something that uh, we really, really would suck. So, the latch is currently in. So, the window, you can see it's all the way up right now. So, as soon as I pull on the outside, like you do inside or outside, usually I just pull on this. And then, Sometimes you gotta help it along with this because it's basically simulating like you're pulling it off that little hook right there. So, there you go. Window lowers down. Window shifts back up. And then you can check it. Looking pretty good. Oh, we got a little guy right there. What's that little guy? What's that little guy all about? Let's find out. So we can shift, we can latch it again. It's Ah, we're about 20 minutes. I'm going to grab the screwdriver. It's always easier with that. We're about 20 minutes away. Should we head over now? Yep. Yep, she's going to be all done in about five minutes, and then we'll wrap up the stream. As long as whatever this is, just a little careless air bubble. We're going to make sure you're gone. See ya. Facebook said this was a Chevy. What does Facebook know? <laughs> oh, yeah, I guess I forgot to update titles. Cool. There we go. And then... No more booble. Go on. Okay, cool. Perfect. Looking good. Yep, she's all set. Come get her. I like this. I got this little little keyboard tray thing fits right under the TV and now I got a little mouse and keyboard stand and I don't have to like reach far into the toolbox. I like it. Ooh, and I got a little new payment reader thingy here. So I'm setting up a tablet and then that's gonna be my little checkout thing. It's gonna be nice. All in the toolbox. Do you know when Glass Aid's gonna be back in stock? I'm sorry, I've answered it a bunch of times. I don't have an exact date yet, hopefully soon though. But I'm sorry, it's not back in yet. Come and get it. I like these extra lights. So, I went around the whole thing today. So we have lights that went over that side and this side. And then I bought some extra ones and we just want clean around. So we'll hopefully have a nice, even 
glow around the whole car. And then we got that big overhang casting a nice soft light down too. It's, uh, it is very well lit. <laughs> Canon. The trick is always trying to create nice lighting for cameras and it's really difficult to do when you're walking around the whole car. So what seemed to be the best was having like glow from up top as much as possible and not bright lights on the side. But your eyes in person would be able to see it. The problem with the camera is that if it's got a bright light right behind it, like in the, in the background, it adjusts the camera to basically darken up the immediate stuff and brighten up everything behind it. It'll adjust the exposure for the backlight and then you won't be able to see what's going on. Um, give it a, give it a tech for the people at home. What now? Any specific license you need to opening up a shop or running a tent business? Out of your home, uh, check with the city. Check with your city because there's zoning regulations. So, uh, automotive stuff is technically supposed to be zoned out of like commercial buildings and you know if there's specific zoning for where you live. So if you have your house on like, a, it depends on where your house is. Like if you're in the middle of a subdivision, you probably aren't gonna get zoning for it. But if you have like your own piece of property somewhere else, then maybe you can. Uh, I don't know, but there are people that have successfully gotten permits from the city. Uh, you should definitely have like some sort of a business license and register with your state, so like an LLC is usually what most people do. Have you tried the Bose Bluetooth glasses? <laughs> no, I've seen them. I'm not going to tint in sunglasses though. <laughs> that would be funny. They're, uh, they're, they're interesting though. They, they don't, you don't have to put headphones in, they just kind of fire into your ears though. But these ones, I don't enjoy them being separate from one another, but they have been, they're really good sounding and they're better than my other ones on noise canceling now. What is the silver car? Why is the silver car? Because it just doesn't get used. I gotta sell it. I gotta fix a quarter window and sell it, but it's just gotten pushed off. Can we control contamination while tinting outside? It's difficult. Um, so there's a lot that people will blame on the environment that they're in. And you can actually do pretty good jobs just about anywhere. The challenge is really wind. So I could be in a dusty shop, but as long as the airflow is down to a minimum, um, I can put out good work. Like basically everything has a chance to settle. And so there's no overhead fans. The doors are somewhat shut, if not all the way shut, like there's no cross breezes and stuff like that. When you feel air going past you, or it's like starts to tug on your film or something, that's when you're gonna have stuff creep into your film, like, like even speckling and stuff. Um, you know, I probably do need those sunglasses because I turn these lights up a little bit. I gotta check the, what it looks like. Um, I wish these tinted. <laughs> How did you get into tinting? I want to try to tint my own windows. Do you recommend taking classes? I recommend just messing around with it in the beginning and then taking a class later. Um, learn what you can from the internet and just trial and error and then take a class. You always will be able to get a head start just with taking a class, but I always feel like a class is more impactful depends on the person, but I feel like the class is more impactful when you kind of already have at least tried to stick tint on windows. And like, you don't have to be good at it or anything, you just have to mess with it. So you kind of know what you're playing around with. And then when somebody's talking to you, you know what to pay attention to more. Whereas if you're just, you haven't even touched film, and then you're taking a class on day one, everything's so brand new, you're gonna be so like, solution, spray bottle, squeegee, awkward, uh, and then the class is gonna be over and you're gonna have like a better understanding of where to go but you could have 
kind of learned a little bit more, I think, the other way. I got me the glasses and put the prescription on. It's so much better. Oh, you put your prescriptions on it. Ah! Dang. I don't... No, I can't do it. Sorry, I was like... But, he, so, that's cool. You, you made your Bose glasses prescription glasses, which would fit, and I'd actually I'd never have to... Do, dang. All right. Now I'm sold, but I'm not going to get it. I'm not gonna get them yet. Maybe, maybe in the future. Let you hear everything around you. Yep, I put this on transparency mode, but it still always feels like an earplug. The prescription, that's what sold it. But it just, God, that's gotta be expensive. <laughs> um, how much was the, uh, how much, so the Bose headphones, Bose glasses uh, with prescription, Bose frames prescription. How much was this? Custom lenses for your Bose frame. See, then you could have like tint, like the tinting ones, right? So it, when I'm in here, it stays clear, and then I go outside, and then it tints just like these ones do. Mmm. It would remove a gadget from my ear. Dang, I like that idea. <laughs> All right, we're gonna shout out some super chats. But did you do this? <laughs> uh, activity feed. Ooh, that reminds me, starter kits. Uh, so what film do you recommend? Tint Depot. I dropped a link in chat. Check out Tint Depot. Um, they have, like, I linked basically a list of recommendations. Um, they have some really good films that you can start off with. You can save some money that way. And is there a good starter kit? They have a starter kit, and also Sun Distributing has starter kits. Check out sundistributingdirect.com. They, uh, they have starter kits, too. I forgot. I would, I would definitely go for something off of a tint site rather than Amazon because Amazon will just bundle something together for like 15 bucks and they're all kind of just junky. So you want something that's a little bit better than that. So when starting a business, should I check for zoning, business license? Um, well, definitely get an LLC, but call your city and see what it's gonna take uh, if they, if you can even do that. Like, I don't know, I, you look up what you can, but it, it was confusing to me. I just call the city and see what you can do where you are if they can at least point you in direction or somebody to talk to. My client's gonna get a scare when they see the fog. <laughs> That's why I got rid of the balloon for a little bit. So the balloon would explode. So if somebody's sitting up there, I was just concerned that they would get like freaked out. So I didn't wanna do that. But these, I mean, these will go off all the time now, they're just fun. So, no problem there. All right, we're gonna shout out some Super Chats. Uh, so, big shout out to Daniel, who just Super Chatted like a boss, Mr. Moneybags today. $50, and then a bunch of 10s today. Good God, thank you. Hope you feel better too, man. Uh, Alligator, Jose, Jose. Oh, yeah, that one was from last one, but Jose snuck one in at the beginning today and scared me. <laughs> Thank you. Much appreciated. When is the next live stream? Mm, tomorrow or Wednesday? I gotta check the schedule, but it, probably tomorrow. I know I have a semi coming in at like three o'clock for front doors that I really don't. I'm probably not gonna stream because 
it's going to have to sit back there, and then it's just going to be a little chaotic with ladder and stuff. Not looking forward to it. Should be okay though. They're just they're always funny trying to get them cut out. That's all. Cause there's like the mirrors and all that stuff in the way. When I have my, I have my glasses on when I go outside, they turn black. So they have the tinting frames too. That's that's nice. These ones do as well, and I really really like it. But they don't have headphones in them. For a sedan, what size roll would I need? 36. Get a 36 inch roll, you'll be good with most cars. When is, uh, da, 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 da. 2014 Taurus? Ooh, that's a good one to practice on too. 2014 Taurus is really straightforward. The headrests pop out, you got a lot of room on the sides. Bottom seals, some of them, they're, they're not tight, but they're just like the finicky, they're just the little harder rubber ones. You'll be good on that one. Really easy to shrink that back window too. But it's a good practice car for sure. How much do you charge for a semi? Uh, on the front two, I was 200, but then he wanted ceramic, so now it's going to be three for the front two doors. He's rescheduled a couple times, so he's brought other stuff in for ceramic on the front doors and windshield strips. So you're still doing only live streams? Um, no, we're doing uh, both video and live streams. Uh, the videos, I'm really just clipping some of the stuff out of the live streams that I think is really important. And then I'm reposting those as a dedicated video. And they've been doing better than the live streams. Which makes sense. Uh, but it's still primarily a streaming channel, so. Ooh, dark theme. Dark theme for YouTube Studio is here. Wow, about time. Everything else was dark mode. Content. Yeah, my channel's been like kind of taking off again. So that's been really cool. But usually from the older videos, not, not as much of the newer ones. I hate to do editing. Yeah, I'd pay somebody to edit. I've done it a couple times. Did you end up getting a clip for the Continental seal removal? Uh, it actually turned out to be easier than I thought. So it's literally just popping the seal, the, the door panel back, and pulling out the seal. You don't need a special tool or anything. So I, I did record it, but I don't think I'm going to post it because it was easier than I thought. Really, really easy to pull out and put back in. I hate doing editing. Live streaming is so much more fun. It is. It is way more fun to me. Posting a video and then like you'd lose a lot of interaction, I think. Comments are only so fun. Some people go neat or you're dumb. <laughs> yes, engaging, exactly. Yeah, live streaming for me is way more fun. Alrighty, so we're gonna go ahead and end things. Uh, thank you guys so much uh, for tuning in. I have a couple small things I have to do. Um, I'm setting up my little card reader station over there, so I gotta do that. Um, and then we'll be back either today, or sorry, tomorrow, or today's Monday, Wednesday. So Tuesday or Wednesday, I'm not sure. So subscribe. I'll probably have a video up if I don't stream tomorrow. And uh, have a good one. Goodbye.